Adventurers, a lot of new players are flooding through the gates of Albion Online. Albion is not in a bad spot when it comes to catching the attention of new players. The game is super shiny, it has pretty good graphics if you ask me, the art style at least it's super interesting, the gameplay is simple to understand, and if you've been playing League of Legends or other MOBAs, it's a quick transition in the world of MMORPGs that honestly no other MMORPG offers. But Albion has a problem. Even though a lot of new players are coming in, not a lot of new players are remaining beyond the gates of Albion. They play for a, a day, they play for a week, maybe even for a month, but ultimately they end up quitting. Chances are if you have some friends that are playing Albion online, you can probably totally relate to what I'm saying right now. You probably had friends joining Albion, trying it out, maybe even having fun, but then being lost in the sheer amount of content or because of the lack of information or simply because they just don't know exactly what to do in the game. The lack of direction, which don't get me wrong, I totally understand. The lack of direction and the sandbox nature of the game is probably one of the main appeals for most people about Albion. But sometimes it can actually work against the player. You see, I am all in for a sandbox game. But the more options you have in a game, the better you have to explain those options. And adventurers, here I think we can all agree about the fact that Albion Online does not do a very good job at introducing new players into the different types of content that the game has to offer. This discussion, adventurers, will be about the tutorial and some feedback that I managed to find by stumbling upon a book by Mr. Matthew M. White, Learn How to Play Designing Game Tutorials for Video Games. It's a super interesting book that touches on the topic of how developers should develop their tutorials in a way in which players can understand what the game is actually about. And it touches some super interesting key points that I have uh, noted over there just so I make sure that I don't forget any of them. Before we talk about the solution, let's focus a little bit more on the problem. So, the tutorial in Albion is divided into three parts. First part, begins whenever you jump on the tutorial island. That's the beginning and is the probably the best part about the whole tutorial. It explains the basic concepts but it explains them in a way in which a new player feels like they're just simply playing the game. You don't feel like you're doing a tutorial, you feel like you are part of the journey. At least uh, after the moment you get into the camp and you see a lot of people, that's when you feel like the game started. You don't realize that you're doing the tutorial anymore. And uh, this part of the explanation system in Albion provides you explanations about the crafting system, the gathering system, the refining system. Uh, it shows you a little bit how the builds work and how the classless system works with all the skills being assigned not to your character, but to your gear and how you can mix and match them. Uh, it shows you the very basics of the game and the core structure on top of which the game is being built on. The second stage of the tutorial begins whenever you leave Tutorial Island and you start seeing some quests. Now, we all know as Albion players that quests are not the main thing in Albion, but the reason those quests are there is a super smart reason. You have those quests over there because most players that are playing MMORPGs are used to seeing that. So they know that whenever they see an exclamation mark or a question mark, they know that they need to go over there and interact with that NPC. And that brings them in the second stage of the tutorial which explains two things or multiple things but two main features and this is where we get into a pretty bad spot first feature that is explained is silver making and the way the game recommends that you farm silver is by killing static mobs in a solo static dungeon which by the way does not exist in the game anymore previously it used to be pretty much up to date because this was something available in the roads of avalon but then they decided that mr retroman died too many times in the roads of avalon so they had to nerf them and that's where the solo dungeons in the roads of avalon were removed for good, the solo static dungeons I mean, not the solo randomized that you can still pop inside hideout areas. On top of that, this stage of the tutorial also introduces you to the use of gold. There's a quest that gives you two or, two or three gold, I don't remember exactly, and you can use this gold to basically transform it into silver. Convenient enough if you think about it, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Now that being said, after the player finishes those quests and just runs back and forth, collects materials and so on and so forth, and after they finally figure out where to find the chestnut planks, that is where the third stage of the tutorial tutorial begins and this is the stage that is driven by the curiosity of the player. You see you as a player, let's say you're running around and all of a sudden you see a road of Avalon and you don't know where that is. The tutorial told you nothing about that so you want to approach it. If you've never watched anything about Albion you will have absolutely no idea what to expect. So you just go to it, click on it and that's when the problems begin and they get even worse over time. Because when the player gets curious and wants to check out a certain type of content that most likely they're not able to do at the very moment, well, they're going to be clicking on that and all of a sudden they're going to wake themselves up in front of a giant wall of text. Now, even if somebody reads that wall of text and pays attention to it, 
Chances are, if you are at the stage in which you don't know what a Road of Avalon is, you probably don't have the capacity in terms of IP and game knowledge to go and do Roads of Avalon. So even if you read it, by the time you're going to use that information, you're going to forget all about it. Straight up. The same thing happens with Corrupted Dungeons, the same thing happened with The Mists, and so on and so forth. Players get overwhelmed with information that most players just simply skip because that's the default whenever it comes to MMORPG players and big walls of text. And then they wonder what on earth is that content about. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong. We as tutorial makers make a lot of schmackaroons thanks to the fact that the Albion tutorial is super lackluster. But I do care about the... Um health and the integrity of the game and one game can only be healthy if they have a constant influx of new players always pouring in and we have that but unfortunately those new players are not staying in the game to become uh, experienced players or even veteran players they leave right away because they're just being confused and I feel like a lot of new players if they're watching this right now or maybe people that have friends that tried this game and then left can probably relate with this you are left out at the end of the tutorial with more questions than answers and you're left out with even less of a direction that you had before starting playing the game the game is truly just leaving you in a whole world and that wouldn't be the problem but this world is super punishing so if you make a mistake as a new player if you happen to go in one of those roads of Avalon without knowing what they're about you're gonna die and you're gonna be super frustrated and again I know we as veteran players know that that is part of the game but I don't know how many new players know that and I don't even know how little players accept that now adventurers uh, here's where we go into what I managed to find and the reason I wanted to make this video and it's again talking about the book learn to play designing tutorials for video games by Matthew M white this book is again a book designed for game designers to help them in a way design tutorials now as far as I know I might be wrong about this but Mr. Matthew M. White is basically a psychology expert. I'm not sure if he's a game designer but he's basically trying to explain the psychology behind making a tutorial and there's some super fun principles that I feel like the game could really benefit from understanding. I at least had a, a little bit of a wake-up moment realizing how good a tutorial could be if it would follow those concepts. Alright so firstly you want to embed tutorials into in-game mechanics. So exactly the thing that Albion Online is doing with the first stage of the tutorial you don't do the tutorial by showcasing a wall of text or by giving an atlas to the players and allowing them to read. Uh, Paul Will does that and it's super bad in my opinion. You showcase by asking them to do it. You want to show them how crafting is done? Go ask them to craft. You want to showcase how uh, gathering is done? Go ask them to gather. By playing, you learn much better than by reading. Then there's the concept of combining game design with psychology. Albion Tutorial could benefit from understanding player motivations and learning styles. Some players are thrill seekers, some players are strategists, and some players are simply social butterflies that just want to have that massive guild to interact with. Tailoring the tutorial experience to those different player types can make the learning experience of a game much more personalized. For example, you should have different options that you can make. Again, I'm going to come back to how the tutorial could be reimagined to implement all of those principles. Right now, I just want to read through them a little bit. What about non-instructional teaching methods? You know, whenever you're doing the tutorial, you don't want the player to feel as if they're doing a tutorial and, oh man, I cannot wait to finish this so I can finally get to playing the game. This is so long. This is so boring. Games like Gloria Victis, for example, have a super long and super drawn out tutorial process that does explain a lot of the game's features, but man, it's boring and everybody just wants to get through it as fast as possible because it's just too long and too tedious. You also want to balance the challenge and skill. You don't want the tutorial to be a walk in the park. This is another principle. You want the tutorial to have enough challenge so that the new player feels challenged, but you don't want it to be super hard. Games like Dark Souls and Elden Ring tend to have the tutorial on the harder side of things, but at the same time, there are parts of the tutorial which are super fun. And notice how you don't feel like you're doing the tutorial in a game like Elden Ring. You're just killing mobs while the game is explaining different concepts and different ways of killing mobs. You're excited about it and it's not tedious at any point. And it also provides enough of a challenge because if you mess up, you go gonna die you're gonna learn the consequences of your actions because that's what's important the tutorial should showcase what the game is about and our tutorial does not really do that but again i'll touch on that in a little bit you also want to provide immediate feedback to the player so they understand what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong by having certain pop-ups games like world of warcraft do this pretty well in my opinion and i know a lot of people hate the tutorial island in world of warcraft but there is something about this in my opinion that uh, more games should implement you have at some point throughout the tutorial island in World of Warcraft an NPC interaction in which you are forced to use certain spells. And the NPC itself is basically coaching you into using the spells the right way. Let's say you are a druid. If you use Moonfire to engage on a mob, that's wrong. 
because the mob was not aggroed on you, Moonfire is an insta-cast ability, you first want to start the fight with a casting spell, so that you cast, you finish casting, the ability goes through, because it's a castable spell, it's usually on the stronger side, so you start with some really powerful attacks, and then you apply Moonfire. When Moonfire runs out, you want to reapply it, that's basically a debuff, and the tutorial itself walks you through those steps. And it's super important that the game does this. And lastly, there's also dynamic difficulty adjustment, I'm not entirely sure how our game could benefit from this but it's basically the idea that you don't want the challenge to feel boring for veterans that are starting a new character which in Albion doesn't happen that often and you don't want the tutorial to feel over challenging for the actual newcomers in the game you could tether the experience based on the player's experience but again I'm not sure how that could be applied in Albion now adventurous Let's just take a moment to imagine how the Albion tutorial could be if those principles or other similar principles would be followed. The first part of the tutorial, in my opinion, the island part is perfect. The second part is interesting, but it just explains out of date uh, mechanics. And the third part could be tied in with the second. Imagine this, you walk out of the tutorial island, you see those question marks that you're super used to as an MMORPG player, you know that you have to go and interact with the NPC, so you go and interact with the NPC. And when you talk with the NPC, besides the normal stuff that the game should showcase, all of a sudden he tells you about the corrupted dungeon. He tells you about the mists, he tells you about the roads of Avalon, not all of those things at once, but one by one. And slowly but surely, you get introduced to content. Now, I don't think the game should have a quest marker on the map, go and find the mist, the mist is over there, go find it. No, I think the game should just tell you about the existence of the mists, should tell you about the existence of the roads, should put you up to date with the type of content that is available. It shouldn't just walk you through it necessarily, but it should tell you that it exists. Because keep in mind, as a player who's never played this game and who doesn't watch guides for this game and just walks in blind, which by the way, most people, that's how they play game, that's the casual gamer, and the mass majority of players are casual gamers, well, they have no idea about this content. They just know about what the tutorial showed them and they feel like the game is kind of boring, even though over the initial layer that the tutorial showcases, the game has been built up and up and up and up and up to include a lot of other types of content. When in the second stage, whenever you get off of the tutorial island, that is where the game could slowly introduce the idea that there's more to this game than what you've seen so far. Whenever you go and let's say for example you click in uh, a corrupted dungeon, you find a corrupted dungeon, you're super curious about it, you've never seen this so far, all of the dungeons have been green, all of a sudden there's a dungeon that's red, what on earth is this? You click on it, instead of the big wall of text, what if the NPC that introduced you to this content in the first place, by just telling you about it, in a voice acted or maybe even a cinematic scene or something like that, uh, they could even, by the way, I'm just thinking about this, they could even have an NPC interaction that plays the different trailers. You know, let's say The Rise of Avalon. You click on that and the trailer for The Rise of Avalon plays on your screen just so that the content gets introduced to you so you understand what's there for you. And it's much better to have that than a big wall of text. But coming back to my idea. So let's say you find a corrupted dungeon, you're curious about it. Now normally, in the current age, if you click on it, you're gonna see a big wall of text that most people ignore. But what if, whenever you clicked on it, the NPC that introduced you to this type of content in the first place would come back and would basically just tell you, Hold Traveler. You are approaching dangerous lands. Allow me to follow you so I can show you around. And you have two options. Yes, follow me, or no, I wanna go in alone. If you select no, you go in in a corrupted dungeon like you normally do, just go in a corrupted dungeon. However, if you select yes, you go in an instanced version of a corrupted dungeon, in which you don't have a big wall of text explaining you the different features, but you have the NPC following you around in a corrupted dungeon that, by the way, is not a real corrupted dungeon, just an instance, and explaining the different systems. And he's gonna show you the bosses, he's gonna show you the different traps, he's gonna show you how invasion looks like, and you can fight a mob whenever you get invaded, or maybe even if they feel like... Uh, super super handy and they want to start doing some work i'm talking about sbi they could even develop a pvevp fight similar to what we had in the sixth anniversary event just one of those mobs scaled down to feel like a player and the new player fights another allegedly new player or maybe this could even be a moment in which matchmaking finally makes it in the game and new players are paired up against each other the mob explains you how you can uh, break the crystals if you need to break the crystals how you can escape how to get rewards how infamy works and all of this is explained not through a big wall of text 
but through the actual game showcasing you the actual content. And again, in my opinion, the best way to do this is to have it instanced. To not have a, an actual corrupted dungeon with a mob actually walking you through. To have an instance, totally separate version of a corrupted dungeon that you're never going to be able to walk in if you don't reset the tutorial, which by the way should be something doable, and you just walk in it and the whole purpose of the area is to show you around. The same thing could be done with the Roads of Avalon. Imagine if a mob showed you around and explained aspects, explained uh, chests, explained Avalonian dungeons in a way in which it's interesting. It shouldn't feel like a tutorial based on the principles that we've just read. It should feel like you playing the game. That would give a much better direction to the player. That would give a lot more hope and a lot more content, a lot more content opportunities, if you want, for the player that just started playing and knows nothing about this game. Adventurers, that's just my take on this. I genuinely feel like the Albion tutorial is single-handedly driving off a lot of players, or right? maybe I should say the lack of a good Albion tutorial is driving off a lot of players. And again, some of those principles, you're gonna recognize them. The first stage of the tutorial is absolutely following those principles. It's just the second and third stage that are really lackluster. And it leaves the new player wondering where on earth do I find the chestnut planks? Adventurers, please make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for spending time with the Mighty Wizard. It's been a pleasure.